the fundamental theorem of algebra and the linear factor theorem and the number of zeros of a polynomial theorem all kind of, to me, boil down to the same thing. And that's probably going to offend some math purists out there. Um, but the fundamental theorem of algebra, to me, states essentially, I could give you the definition and all that jazz, but essentially it's this. If you have an equation um, or a function, let's say f of x equals uh, x squared plus 3x uh, plus 2, for instance. Something like that. Um, essentially, I know that there are two roots to this equation because of the power, uh, which of the of the highest power of the polynomial. And in that, our case, it's a two. So we say n equals two, or the degree equals two. So the, this is a second degree polynomial which tells me that there are two roots, or two zeros, two places where if you set this function to zero, there are two answers to this, okay, essentially, that's it. So if it was to the third power, and we're not going to get into this too deep yet, but if it was, say, x to the third plus 5x plus 2 or something like that, um, this was our function. This is a third degree polynomial, and so its degree is um, 3. So if you set it to 0, we are going to find three roots or three numbers that, um, that equal 0, that make this true. Now, that being said, it could be the same number. So Maybe I should go back and say that there would be three factors here and two factors here. And I'm going to erase this one because this, this other one's a little easier to mess with, obviously. This is a quadratic that factors. If you don't know how to factor, you need to go back and review that. Um, I'm going to quickly factor this one. This is plus plus gives me a plus plus in here, x and x here, and two and one here. And if you check it, to, you know, if you were to distribute it, you'd end up back there with what you started with. Well, this is a this is a set of um, linear factors. It, it has two of them, and if if this were set equal to zero, each would be a, an answer that makes this true. Whoops, plus one equals zero. So x would be negative two, and x would equal negative one. Sometimes the Sometimes you have just one answer, but two linear factors. So let's say you had x squared uh, plus 4x plus 4, okay, for a function. Let's call, call it h of x. And so this particular h of x, if you set that equal to 0, this factors, there should be two of them by the fundamental theorem of algebra, which in our case would be x and x, plus and plus, 2 and 2. And if you check that, if you distribute these back through, um, you would end up with, I think I screwed that up. No, no, looks right. You would have x squared plus 4x plus 4. I did it kind of out of order the way you're probably used to. But if you multiply it, if you distribute it, you'll come up with the same thing, which tells me that we have two, two linear factors, but only one root. It's called a double root. So minus two, you know, it equals zero, so you minus two, and so x would equal negative two in both cases, because this is x plus two squared. So that's, you've, if you've been in algebra at all, you've dealt with these before, so this should be nothing new to you. What is new, and this is where we're headed to that with this, is a function that looks like this. So x to the fourth minus 4x cubed plus 8x squared minus 16x plus 16. Okay, there are four, uh, because of the highest power is a four, there, this is a fourth degree polynomial, there are four 
um, linear factors. In other words, we're going to have something that looks like this when we're done, um, where we're going to fill it in with some binomial stuff. And so that's what we're going to do here. And hopefully I can do that in the next five minutes here. This, these take a little bit longer to do, which is fine. So first off, um, use the rational root theorem. And uh, if, you know, if you don't know that, uh, go back and review it, rational root theorem. But I know my rational roots could be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, and plus or minus 8. Because remember, it's that P over Q idea where 16 is P, all the factors of P of P, uh, all the factors of 16, and Q is all the factors of 1, because here would be Q and here would be P. Again, go back and review that if you're not sure. So, out of all the rational roots in the world, we have, we know we are looking at, all the rational numbers in the world, we know that we're looking at, we got, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4 times 2, we have 8 roots here that we could test. Now, to save yourself some time, um, I always pull open some graphing utility, like in our case, I'm going to use GeoGebra, and we'll graph that one, let me get rid of this one, and pull up our function, and there you can see it touches the x-intercept in one spot at 2. So right in that spot, it has a double root at 2, and, it, and I'll explain why that's a double root. So this is going to have an x minus 2 squared in it, actually. Excuse me. So what I'm going to do now is use synthetic division and use that help use that to help me find the rest of the roots. So my I know a rational root out of all of those eight. This two is my rational is one of my rational is my rational root for this one. So I'm going to go ahead and divide this function by by x minus two, and so we'd have one negative four. 8, negative 16, positive 16. And so what you want to do here is uh, come up with, I hope I, ah, there we go. Um, we want to go ahead and divide this. So you bring down your term. There's 1, negative, oh, <laughs> I've already lost track of what I was doing. 2 times 1 is 2, add down, that's negative 2. Again, review synthetic division if you're not sure what I'm doing here. 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 16 is 8 is negative 8, negative 8 and 2 is uh, negative 16, which is 0. That's what we wanted. So if we were to divide that polynomial function by x minus 2, we would have a new polynomial, which would be x cubed minus 2x squared plus 4x minus 8. Okay. Um, whenever it bounces off, let me pull that back up. Whenever it bounces off like this one does, like it bounces off the 2, the x-intercept, we know it's a double root. So we know it occurs twice. So in our case, we're going to plug in this x minus 2 again and divide it by 2 again because it is a double root. So 2 goes here, then you got 1, negative 2, 4, and negative 8. Okay, again, if you don't know synthetic division, go look it up. So you bring down your first term, 2 times 2, that's 2, that's 0, 0, 4, 4 is 8, and 0. So beautifully enough, we're down to x plus 4 equals 0 as our new polynomial. Uh, nope, sorry, wrong. x squared, because it goes, we're at a cube, and it becomes x squared. This is the x term. This is the constant term here, this 4. So it would be x squared plus 4 equals 0, because you can leave this out. You know, sorry if that, that bothers you. x squared plus 0x plus 4 equals 0. So we're going to go ahead and see now it's down to something that we can just solve. And we don't have to do any more fancy work to it. So I'm going to subtract 4, subtract 4, and x squared equals negative 4. And then you'd root both sides. And so x is equal to plus or minus 
two i. So that's a set of complex conjugates there. So if you combine all these answers together, the fact that I have a set of double roots with two, we did that twice, and then um, so x could be two, x could be two again, x could be two i, and x could be negative two i. There's all four of my roots that we we're looking for. And so the factor, that original polynomial, I forget what I called it, was it? Um, well, I just, I just threw it up there as a function, but or not as a function, as, as an expression. You could have factored this to x minus 2, x minus 2, x minus 2i, and x plus 2i. So if you were really, really crazy and wanted to multiply these out using distribution, you could. And when you got done with that big behemoth, you would have what we started with, which was x to the fourth minus 4x cubed plus 8x squared minus 16x plus 16. So if you have a Sunday afternoon, you know, that you're not doing anything, why not multiply them babies out? So, <laughs> so that's the fundamental theorem uh, there's of algebra. Um, I'm going to show some more examples of this because I did go through that kind of fast and show you some other tricks and things that you're going to need to know to do this. So it's a lot to swallow. Uh, good luck. I hope this helps. I see you. Uh, see you next time.